Welcome to the TRT and Hormone Optimization YouTube channel. And as a guest today, we have back here with us, Dr. Jeffrey Rutterbush. Welcome, Jeffrey. It's great to be back. Thanks again. So let's talk today about chlorella and spirulina. Are there any health benefits in taking them? Um, what supplements could we take, dosing and so on? Sure. PRT and Hormone Optimization Channel. I was on the channel before, so I've been following the channel, watching it every now and then, so be sure to check them out. Consider subscribing, hit that notification bell, and you'll be on your way. The short answer is yes, and the longer answer is heck yes. So, um, I don't have a whole lot of... Uh, clinical experience with either as far as prescribing them or recommending them. I do have some experience myself with spirulina. And I'll go into that shortly. I have never taken chlorella. However, you know, through my naturopathic and orthomolecular training and on my books on natural medicines, I was able to do some research and come up with some information regarding chlorella. The first time I did hear chlorella, actually in clinical practice was when I was uh, overseas in the Middle East, Middle Eastern ways in particular. They really like their chlorella and spirulina. And in brief, they're both microalgae, both blue-green type of algae. Um, chlorella, by its root word, chlor, is a highly chlorophyll containing uh, algae. And so Dr. Um, Robert Adkins in his book, Vital Nutrient Solution, which I refer to often, even though it's getting somewhat dated, it still is a plethora of great information on, on natural therapies. And he mentions that chlorella uh, is the highest plant-based food source in antithenic acid. Um, that's a B vitamin, in essence. Uh, and Dr. Uh, Atkins recommends pantothenic acid as the safest and most reliable way to lower cholesterol. In other words, if you have a dyslipidemia, like high cholesterol, especially high LDL, and lower HDL, he, he has found that nine, nine grams, he has 900 milligrams of, of a, a pantothenic acid a day work real well. So that's why he likes chlorella because the highest plant-based source in pantothenic acid. Now it has essential fatty acids. It has a lot of B vitamins and so forth. Both chlorella and spirulina have B12 in it. Believe it or not, with a few plant-based sources of B12, although it's it will never supplant animal proteins or animal sources of, of B uh, B12, it's a good plant-based source. Now, the main difference of chlorella and spirulina is digestibility. Uh, chlorella has a cell wall, and so it's harder to digest it and assimilate. And it's more expensive than to actually process chlorella in the form that humans can assimilate it. So of the two products, um, spirulina is the more easily digestible and easily assimilated uh, blue-green uh, blue algae uh, for human consumption. Different books you read say that they have different protein-based contents. Chlorella is about 60% by weight protein. Some, some of my, refer, my references say that spirulina is anywhere from 60 to 85% protein by dry weight. So spirulina is more easily digested as a higher protein content. Uh, and further research, it contains a phycocyanin. It's a billy protein that inhibits cancer cells. So if you can get some enhanced immune function and get a little, you know, anti-cancer benefits of spirulina versus chlorella, I would recommend spirulina. 
Now, chlorella has a, an ingredient called chlorellin, which also enhances the um, immune system. And as a dermatologist, I found out that my Middle Eastern friends like uh, chlorella, they make it a paste of some sort, and put it to the face, it's a great facial cleanser. All these chlorophyll-based plant substances are great detoxifiers, blood cleansers, liver cleansers. But again, of the two, the fact that spirulina has a higher protein content per dry weight, and to put it in perspective, beef, roast beef, has 20% protein by, by weight. Spirulina has 85%. And lastly, in my research to, uh, recently, even the space program, SpaceX is looking into uh, providing astronauts with spirulina as a plant-based method to deliver high quality protein uh, while in space flight. So again, and so what is a good dose of spirulina? Research indicates that one to two teaspoons per day, it comes in tablet form. So six to nine tabs per day, one or two teaspoons today, uh, to, uh, per day uh, for the uh, benefits of, of spirulina. Uh, I don't have dosing uh, information. Oh, there I do, I, I, miss, I misspoke. Five grams daily of chlorella for three months has been shown to have the most therapeutic benefits for cleansing and detoxification. So chlorella at five grams per day, for at least three months, spirulina at six to nine tabs or one to two teaspoons per day for some period of time. So that's what I have in short sweet for chlorella versus spirulina. One last thing I will say about chlorella is the highest plant-based form uh, for nucleic acids. It has a cell wall, so you got nucleic acids, RNA, DNA. But so we worry about that when it comes to gout. You know, nucleic acid and so forth. But I, the research I come up with says it's nobody has ever consumed high amounts of chlorella has ever had a gouty attack. You don't really have to worry about that. Okay. Okay. Very interesting. Thank you, Jeffrey. Yes. You're welcome. Before we continue, if you appreciate the content we bring to this channel, check out the Amazon links in the description of this video. These are the links to the products we use, going from supplements, protein powder, pre, post, intra workout, anti aging cream sunscreen, needles and syringes to inject, and so on. If you'd like to purchase one of those products, please use the direct link so that it will earn us a few cents as a tip and you'll be guided directly to the products we recommend. Thanks in advance. All links should work on the US, Canadian and UK Amazon stores. And now give this video a thumbs up and go watch one of these videos to learn a ton more about TRT and hormone optimization.